Greetings, Earthlings. I'm back with another handheld dynamic mic review for you guys. Today we're looking at this guy, the SE Electronics V7 Vocal Dynamic Microphone. If you do want to pick it up, it'll cost you about 100 bucks. Links down below. For this review, the mic's connected directly to the 2i2 2nd Gen. Input gain set at around 85 or 90%. I won't do any compression or any EQ, but I will boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to find out what I did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. If you hadn't guessed, you're gonna get the microphone. You get a microphone mount and you will find a 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter in the thing already. You get a replacement black internal foam windscreen. You get an unpadded zippered carrying pouch. You get some documentation and you get a sticker. As far as the build quality, this thing feels like pretty much every other handheld dynamic microphone I've reviewed so far. It has an all metal body, a metal mesh grill with foam on the inside, and that mesh is pretty strong and doesn't bend when I squeeze on it, and it does have a decent amount of weight to it. As far as specs, this thing has a super cardioid polar pattern. This is actually the first super cardioid mic I've reviewed. It has a frequency response of 40 hertz to 19 kilohertz, an impedance of 300 ohms, a sensitivity of approximately negative 54 decibels, and this thing uses a neodymium magnet inside, which actually helps extend the higher frequencies out to 19 kilohertz. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to see what the actual polar pattern is, what the off-axis coloration is, what the off-axis and rear rejection is like, and how my voice changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. Now I'm passing the microphone back and forth between my hands to see what kind of handling noise it has because this is a handheld dynamic microphone. Now I'm speaking into the microphone three inches away using the Stedman Pro Screen 101, and this is how it sounds. Now I'm banging on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm testing the proximity effect of this thing. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and four feet away from the microphone. <laughs> See electronics. I wanna test your Rupert Neve microphones. Well, the V7 is a handheld dynamic microphone with an extended frequency response well above that of a lot of its competitors. So in terms of pros, it does have that extended frequency response, which will give this microphone more detail when compared to something like the SM58. And the super cardioid polar pattern will help with background noise rejection as well as feedback rejection if you're recording in a live environment in front of the PA. And then in terms of cons, I thought that this did have a fairly excessive handling noise, but that could be resolved by throwing on a high pass filter. And I also didn't think that it did the best job at rejecting plosives. So when we come to the overall sound, I honestly liked this microphone on everything that I tested it against. On the electric guitar, you got a really nice aggressive sound with a really tight low end without sounding muddy. The acoustic guitar sounded huge with a nice full low end and some nice shimmering highs. And on the singing vocals, it could just really cut through a mix and it had some really nice detail in the higher frequencies without any issues with sibilance. So would I recommend this thing? Of course. If you're looking for a more detailed dynamic microphone that does a good job at background noise rejection or feedback rejection, and you're in the $100 price range, then I think this is a great option to add to your mic locker. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want to influence what I review? Geeksrising.com slash podcastage. Want more videos? Logo beneath me. Discord server, link in the description, and I will see you all later. Bye.